Hello guys, welcome back to Learning Feed the Beast. Now last time we were playing with Mistcraft Worlds and since then I've done a lot of hard grinding and got some more pages. And as you can see over here, I've got quite a lot of enchanted books from these. So hopefully I have enough now to make a stable, nice, pretty world. And the aim today is to make some sort of red power mining instrument so I can get enough materials to make my nuclear reactor. Now before I do that, last time I did these machines and I edited them slightly after I did my multiplayer one, so that I'm using routers for these set of pipes, but in single player I cannot get these induction furnaces to work with filters. Um, I could in the multiplayer but not in the single, which is annoying me. Um, but before we begin today, little note that you probably should have read on the news for the FTB launcher if you've seen that. It's been out a little while but it's actually on the FTB launcher itself now. The packs will not be updating to 1.5 um, because Red Power 2 is not ready and will not be ready. They don't foresee updating until 1.6 now so you'll be stuck in 1.4.7 until then. They will be making some beta 1.5 packs without red power, which will be loosely based on the ultimate pack. And they may update some of the Minecraft pack and the Direwolf pack to some later versions of the mods that are already in them. Nothing new, nothing 1.5. So that's how things are going down. So just so you know, and any questions you get, that's where you have to go. If you need more information, read the news feed on the FTB launcher. Okay, so today I need to make a nice new world. And I'm going to do a load of sorting these out. Sort it out so none of them are duplicated. Put them all in my books. Then I'm going to do some testing and really make sure I get a good world before I come and show you guys. And I'll see how it's made. So, I'll be back to you guys in a little while. Okay, this is the world I'm going to attempt. So how you write these books is if you have your actual thing you want then you have a modifier in front of it so if I have a single biome and it's plains if I have a sky color which is magenta if I have a normal sun which is always noon and a zero length so it's always staying at noon I've got extra sun as well I've got no weather now I'm not sure if this bit works done here you've got tendrils and modifiers are a material and I've got crystals I'm not sure if that will actually work I don't have a standard terrain, so I cannot use any of the modifiers, things like um, the lava lakes and stuff like that, and caves and things, which is a bit annoying, but these were the spare pages that I had, or duplicates, so yeah, I did do quite a few of them, and they're in a notebook at the moment, and if I just place this notebook in there, it will transfer the pages and I can make a mining world book. Should be mining world, yep. And if I just make a, another linking book, take that out. So that's linked to this position here where it was made. And we'll just dump it on here. And yes, I know you don't need to put it on to a lectern thing to go there. But we'll give this a go. It might crash the world, so I'll be right back. Good luck. Yeah, I'll be right back. Oh, maybe not. Okay, so what effects have we got on us? Anything yet? Well, that's definitely not a plains biome, is it? Hmm. Something is not happy. And, whoa. Okay, that one's clearly wrong. I think the tendrils definitely kicked it off. So I'll do another attempt, but that looks quite cool. There's a little tiny thing there. I think I'll keep the world anyway. And in here is a library. This is what I do want to show you. So in these new worlds you create, you can get these libraries, and there's extra things in them. Lush Redwoods Biome. If there was a standard, if there was a standard world generation, I'd be really happy. Cloud Color. And there's meant to be... Yeah, there it is. Extra books... Feature, snow, shrubland, tundra, south. So no, I really need the standard generation. Um, I'll just rip out all of this stuff in case there's anything extra. Doesn't look like it. But yes, I will go and try and make another one now. And I'll be right back. Okay, going for a slightly more simplistic world maybe. Just a plains, single biome, noon, same thing as before. Normal weather, and a green sky. So I really hope this is going to be okay now. All it needs to be is an actual plains biome. I uh, didn't name an age to die. Oh well. Get one of them. Get another Lincoln book. All it needs to be is flat and actually a plains and it'll be fine. So is it going to load? It's a bit dark at the moment. There's a sun up there. Green sky. 
we've got effects on us. We've got hunger and slowness. We've got bad weather. But it is plains, I guess it's flat. There's an obelisk over there. Let's have a little look at that first. Oop, there's some stuff there. Meh, not really anything useful, but oh well. But that is a plains bone. What level are we on actually? Is this suitable for mining? 128. So there should be normal stuff down there, not just dirt. Let's just check that. Oh, oh, it's one of these ones, isn't it? Hmm. I don't know about this actually. Hmm. Not really what I wanted. Not really. I'll give it one more go. And actually, I stayed here for a little while, and actually you get... <laughs> I'll show it in a sec. Um, I've been doing lots of looting of these places, and as it's really easy to get around, it's all nice and flat. I'm at 4,000, 4,000 at the moment. I've done a lot of adventuring around. And I've kind of looted a lot of stuff. And also this ender pouch was linked up to my storage system. And I overflow whatever chests were extra in that. So there's even more back there. Loads of bees, loads of knowledge fragments, so yeah, really nice stuff. Those are fourth boot discs. And I think we're going to try and delete this world now. And I think I was told that you could do it by just hitting the book with a sword, but I'll check in a sec. So in here, these are the pages that I've looted on here. If you get a notebook, they're really easy to store. But if I go out here, just for a second or so, yeah, nausea not really good for a world. I could get a um, gravity chest, or gra not a gravity chest, a just a normal helmet, but nah, doesn't really work very well. And I've just decide, discovered I don't have a linking book on me anymore. So I've got to go all the way back to the spawn. Oh dear. Back in a bit. Ah, luckily I can look at my footage and look at the minimap, and we'll go back. So yeah, I'm going to do one final world. It's just going to be a simple uh, single bone, planes, and I just want to get it to work without having any effects. And then I'll get on with making this red power mining thing. So, I'll be right back. Okay, I found a world that I'm now happy with, so we can get on with this episode and do some proper red power mining stuff. And let's have a look at it. It's a planes biome, single biome, normal stars, normal weather, normal sun, normal moon, and that's it. So I thought that would give me a more stable world and it seems to have. I don't know if it's actually a charged world on the thing, on the effects, there are no effects at all. You do hear a bit of lightning now and then, but I don't know if that's just normal weather or if that is just a charged thing, but to be honest it seems to be fine for me, um, unless you can see any problems with that. And it actually goes down to bedrock. There's no islands or anything that I can see. Has my box site, which is why I wanted the planes. Could be pretty good. Like I said, no, it may be charged though, but I can definitely deal with that. That's definitely a very nice world. And I want to and go out and loot more stuff, but I actually did go and destroy the other world just by taking the book out and then you kill the book. Because the books actually have life on them. So you can actually kill them like a mob, which is quite funny. And I went and put Silk Touch on my Vaj, which is awesome. And that's about it. So I'm going to go collect some stuff. <laughs> and uh, I'll be back to you once I've done some more research and some learning. And we're going to make a red power, I think I'm going to make a red power tunnel bore. Because those seem more fun than a moving quarry. And also safe because I can do it underground. I don't need to be up here because I'm only looking for things like bauxite and diamonds really. Don't even need diamonds. Just bauxite and rubies. Rubies would be really, really good. And there's one of the things that if you went to 1.5 pack, you would not get rubies in the generation because they're from red power. Same with enchantments and same with tons of stuff. So I only want to go down there and just mine it out. So a tunnel bore is definitely the best one for me. I think I'll do a different type of one on the server, but definitely do a tunnel bore here. So I've got to do a lot of learning now, and I'll be back to you in a bit. Okay, after quite a few hours of working out how to do tunnel bores and making one creative, 
I've done a base one um, based on another one I've seen but I think I can change it a bit and make it more unique for myself so I've gathered a load of materials and made a load of stuff and uh, redstone tubes, block breakers, frame motors and the general normal stuff you need for one of these and I'm just going to grab all this in me and then take it over to the mining world then I'm going to make a clear room down at the bottom of the world and as it seems that the spawn is flat at least, I don't know how about the rest of the world itself I don't know if it's flat all the way across the floor but if it is I can just make it really close to the floor and it will be fine so if I hollow out a little room here and set up a little tiny workshop I'm going to first of all put in the base of it Ooh, there's some uh, stuff and then I'll get back to each stage and then go through it with you now how it works, why it works, because I was watching some videos and I, I just doing my head in because I didn't understand what they were doing at different parts and they kind of assumed things that I didn't know so I've gone from scratch and I know quite a lot about it now so hopefully I can give you a nice video so you can follow it if you want to I'll just move this stuff over anyway and I'll be back to you when I've built the first bit here we are Okay, I've turned the sound off as well though to stop all that thunder and lightning so you won't be able to hear me play stuff but this is the main principle for any type of tunnel ball you have block breakers on the front these will break blocks obviously when they've got redstone signal coming through these redstone tubes and this is all just the redstone tube frame and you make the from the support frames and on so and this can go all the way up I'm not sure what the maximum amount of these you can use is so we're going to try these I've actually created the bottom bit already in creative so I know kind of what I'm doing now down here I'm using a tesseract with the mast in to go out of now that may work I may swap it for an ender chest I don't know but that connects up to the tubing so that when all these break a block with the redstone signal they send it all the way through into there otherwise I'll swap it out for an ender chest and here I've got an ender chest with all the batteries in to charge up my motors so let's see this bottom bit is just a support frame. Now for all of these frames we're going to be using, they will move blocks which are adjacent to them. So say if I get and uh, let's see if I've got anything in here. Say a filter. Put that there. Now that will be able to move the whole structure because everything is being attached adjacently to a frame. But if there was say that then it won't move because it's actually trying to move something else or when it does move actually it will just leave that behind but if say that was attached to mm, the wall then it can't move the whole world so that wouldn't work either and that's about it for that just mean to make sure that everything is connected adjacently to one of these frames and that will do you fine next thing is that you need to use covers and we need to use panels so when this moves along it's going to go into here and then when it moves in it's going to be touching all this stone and then it'll try and move the world and then it won't work either so to get around that you need to use covers now covers go inside these little boxes um, like so. and these will stop it looking at the next block at all so if I put a I hate this hover with these boots on put that there then it will move this whole thing but it will not touch that frame there and it won't touch any other block which is sitting there as well so it's going to be really really useful for making sure things don't interact so that will be going all the way up and all the way around and I'll do that off camera and then if you want to place things on it so I can't place something directly on top of that if I want to get maybe a I'm not sure if you can do this at all yeah, you can't place things straight on top of them it doesn't work so what we need to do is you need to get a panel out rather than a cover and then we put it down so I want one there and there and there and there so what you're going to do is then it will move things which are attached to a panel so if we put a chest there then when everything moves it will also move the chest no problem which is awesome so that's the basic principles of how these things work and now I'm going to go through and start connecting up the input I'm going to do it step by step and then get back to you so I'm going to put in the turning on part so back in a sec okay so the main covers of this bit are put on I actually have to remove the bottom layer because you can't 
put the bottom bits on. I thought I could, but meh, doesn't work. I need to cover this bottom bit as well, but I'll do that later on so you can see the tubes. All of these ones here at the moment are just normal tubes, and I think they probably stay like that. Then all I've done is put covers over the whole front of this, apart from the one next to the Tesseract and this one here. All the rest have got the covers on here. The, mm, yeah, the covers. And I've got this tiny bit here, so it's one piece of insulated ejected wire, and then you just put one piece of the red alloy wire on the floor, and it connects up, and that comes to here to a receiver. And the wireless transmitter's here, and all I'm going to do is send a timer to that. So when I want this thing to stop, all I do is turn off a timer somewhere else, doesn't matter where it is, and it will stop. And this, because it's on this world, I'll turn this on, and it will keep going, and keep going and keep going and I want to put a chunk loader on this as well so it'll just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going forever and then I also want to put a portal on this as well so that I can turn this timer off hold things up to moving I can turn the portal on go through the portal in here arrive at the location and then maybe dismantle it if it's got too far and then make another mining world and then start over again it's not hard to actually configure and put up once you've done it once. So at the moment it's just breaking blocks. And I believe the Tesseract is working fine for this. Let's put some blocks on here. You see that when the timer goes around, it actually destroys the blocks and takes them in, goes to the tubes, it comes out the Tesseract. So that works fine. And this bit over here as well. Each time this pulses, it's actually going to this filter as well. So I've got three, uh, four redstone tubes here going up. Now this bit will go to the battery box charging. There we are. So, at the moment, my batteries for here for charging go here. Then this filter, I've just got one filter in there of the BT batteries which are full. They then go through here and up into the bottom of the battery box if there's room. If not, it doesn't go through at all. And then once they're charged, all I need to do is retrieve them. So I've got a retriever here, and if I take my boots off, I can actually shift shift fly this there we are, and then got a tube in the top now all I need to do is put a depleted battery in that now I've already depleted one not yet actually and um, if I had a depleted battery I'd then put it into this one here and then make it go through but for the moment there's not enough power in the system so it wouldn't work so I've still got to put in the rest of this bit now so I've got to organize these two frame motors now they are very annoying to get the right way around and I'm going to really check first before I show you which way around they go and then I'll be right back. Okay, I have to make sure. So all I'm going to do is put these frame motors down and I'm going to move it from above so that they're right in rotation. And as you can see at the moment, they're moving things that way. So this will move anything on the top of it in that direction. And we actually want it to go downwards so we just hold shift and then hit it with a screwdriver. We now see that it's actually pointing the other way. It's actually pointing in that direction. So that's the way we want. And we'll do the same for one here. We're going to get up above and place it. There we are. Turn it around again. So now it was facing that way. As it rotates, it now faces that way. So we can see it from below, actually, if I can get on it properly. There we are. It's facing that way. And now to power these, they need blue electric energy. And also, this needs it as well. And then what we do is just use this blue wire and you put it on and that acts as a wire that doesn't need support the same as we saw from the little jacketed wire the little black and uh, you know, black and blue one which we used on the rest of it for the electric stuff and this is just the same without needing any support no walls to go on now this charges them up you see they're now blue and what we need to do that's also charged up now this battery may be depleted yes it is very good we now put that into here, and now what this will do when we turn it on each time, as there's nothing in here, oh, it has already sent one through because it had one in its little space, and that one's got a two in it. Yep. So when we start the machine up, it will pull this one out, and then it will pull a new one through, and then put it back in. So it keep this battery box always charged up, which would be really nice, and that should be most of it. Apart from we've got to get this to power. So at the moment, as you see, this bit has got two covers on, so that when this thing moves here, we'll show you in a bit, that it doesn't then take the thing with it again, 
Um, I think I've got to do that anyway. That's how it works on my creative. Now, these things up here, you need to make sure everything is attached via a frame. So, this battery box is attached via the frame below it. This wire here is attached by this frame here, which is attached by the rest of it, which is all good. This bit here is attached by this frame. Now, this little pipe here will stop it moving because there's nothing attached to it, so we'll just put one there. Now it is attached. It looks a bit weird, but that's how it works. So that all this is now attached. This frame is then attached. The motor is now attached. So that's all good for the moment. But we need to power this. So when we turn this on, it will power this one here. This motor will then move everything forward. In effect, it will move backwards in our viewpoint, but everything else will move forward one. And then this motor here will move this motor in the same place again, and it will move across. We've got to get that to get powered, so we've got some objective wire on me. Put one there, and then one on there. So now, when this goes, it's going to power this, and then it's going to power that as well. And it will just alternate, so if we just turn it on, actually, we may be ready already. Let me just have a little quick check. This is on fine. Um... I one sec, I just check this one. So on some my other screen I've actually got the one running. Hopefully it isn't lagging. Um yeah, I think I want to do this one. Doesn't really make much difference. Um it's only pulling them through. And you've got to go in the bottom of that anyway to make it work or the top. And uh, to Yeah yeah. My charging station we saw before I put them in the top to get it to charge. At the moment I'm putting them in the bottom, it has to go in the bottom to get it to discharge so that would all work fine and I've just got to put some covers on the very bottom so that when we're moving across it's not going to get stuck like we said before now I'm going to miss layer 1 and 2 it seems from this and at the moment I go up to level 18 I think so I think we'll start this up very very quickly and just check that it's working hopefully it does, we turn this on and it will go Ooh, and you see we missed something there this bit here was not attached to anything so we do see that the frame has moved forward one see the blocks are now ready to break those ones if they haven't already but there's nothing holding this bit of wire on so we need to put another frame there now it doesn't look like it's attached like I said before but that is now attached now we should be able to keep going move the motor moves the whole thing now you see anything that has an inventory goes like that each time it moves and then it'll go in you can see all the items go through and it's going on its own now which is very good but there are a few things we need to keep changing to make it work properly so the moment's taking a quite nice chunk out we may try and make it a little bit taller and um, see if it can handle it let's turn it off for now yep and you'll see that as we go along we'll be making some dark spots so that's not really a problem because we're not going to be here so no mobs and that's going to worry us because we're never going to come and see this until we turn it off um, which would be quite good now a couple of things we need to do here we need to make it so that we can get back here and also make it so that it can go or we'll turn off and also make it so that we protected if there's any lava or water so all this frame for the actual block breakers themselves are good but if you might get some lava over here and stuff, I don't really fancy its chances, so we may need to make it safe, and we can do that just by using more frames, which would be okay. And I'm just going to get a little bit more done on this, and build up a little bit more. I'll put all the little covers on the sides and stuff. Um, all they're going to be is all of them, which aren't going to something like this, will just be like that. If they're going to a wall, then they'll just have a cover, just like so. So everything on the outside will have a cover and everything on the inside won't um, just how it's going to be done and that's nice and compact it's actually the one that Direwolf made in his second series of his um, SMP but I modified it a little bit because of the updates but yeah it's much nicer to be able to tell you how it works and know about it than just say here is design go and just like so and I can then put my other stuff on so I get back to you once I've done that and then we'll see it running properly okay so I've finished it and it's going now as you can see the items coming through 
So let's go have a little look at this. <laughs> Hopefully all my machines can keep up with the rates of things coming through. And you see they come through in bursts. I think I may be lagging a little bit because I'm also running a server on this PC so that I can do this because this craft is so unstable on single player. Which is really annoying. Um, same world though. So go down here. Now this should work. You can see it's off there now. It's going to keep going and keep going. And it's making mobs go everywhere. So you don't remember doing that. I'll turn it off. And I walk through this. And now I'm inside it. Very cool. And I can probably put some panels up there if I really want to. Just to make it complete. So all I've done is finished it off, of course. And we'll look at it on the outside. Oh, keep away from the creeper. I put a chunk loader down the bottom there in that space. And as the timer for the whole thing's on the remote. I've also got the portal there and in case that ever goes out for whatever reason if I mistakenly use the same portal for something else I've got, if I get in here properly, I've got a wireless receiver there and I've gone and linked up oh it's not even on me now, we'll just go through the portal again yep. I've linked up this so if you click it it will activate that portal. Now if you shift, not shift, yeah, shift, right click, you can then select what signal this gives out. So if I ever need to, I can turn that portal back on as the redstone signal actually turns the portal back on if it ever gets stuck. And this will just keep going. And then all I need to do is to come to the portal, come here. If I don't want to go any further, say if I'm well, like um, distance 10,000 or something, when I'll start a new world and get rid of this one, so it'll be getting too big. Then I'm going to take this apart and then open new world, do the same thing again. Now I've done it once, it's going to be really easy just to do it again, which is very, very good. So I think that is everything for today. Um, I'm going to let this run for a bit and see what materials I get. And uh, yes, yeah, but so hopefully you've learned something from this. It's a simple enough concept once you've built it once yourself, but to get it done in the first place, it's a bit of a mind boggle. Um, but yeah, if you've got any questions about this, um, do ask me in the chat, in the comments, as normal. So, from me, thank you very much for joining me, guys. Oh, there's some diamond there. And I'll see you next time.